I'm here with Chris Polis at this show in Philadelphia this year. Chris does fabulous perfume bottles. I mean, these things are just you know, knock your pants off. So, uh, Chris, would you please tell us how you got involved with glass and what uh, tell us about some of your pieces here? Yeah, um, I, I started with uh, the uh, Royal Studio uh, Glass Blowing Company uh, back in Australia. Uh, Robert used to do a lot of um, demonstrations in uh, shopping malls, and plus they used to do some work for the Royal Household. And so I used to make little component parts for them. And then over the years, I uh, developed my own technique in the blowing side of it. And I had always had a fascination uh, with uh, the bottles. And so the, the bottles that I do today, I, I like the bottle, but I always try to make the feature of the stopper. Oh, I'm getting this. Yeah, that's great. So, the, yeah, like these miniature ones, you facet a lot of the stoppers. Each one is an individual one. Yeah, each one, yeah. And, but it's worked hot. It's not like it's done in the, um, in the old-fashioned way where it's worked cold, where you uh, cut and polish. I do it while it's still hot. And, and, that, and that, gives me, um, that gives me enough uh, to get that dapple effect, you know, when you shine light through the uh, stopper. And then I use the old-fashioned technique where I taper the stopper so that it can fit into the bottle and it's a tight fit. Amazing. Just you choose to use them for perfume, you know that it's a, a tight seal and, um, and your perfume won't evaporate. That's, now, a lot of these, these are more, some more evolved ones. More the the more ones. elaborate ones, well, I use a lot of um, uh, gold and I use a lot of silver. The, uh, the cranberry colour that you're seeing in there, that's from uh, boiling pure gold. Wow. And the uh, yellow that you see, see in there, that's from um, boiling silver. So what happens in different lights, it, it, it responds differently. You get a different response. And uh, the, the tubing that I use is um, reverse optics. Which gives, that's what gives you that uh, optical effect. Oh, okay. It has fins on the inside on the of the inside. glass. Yeah. Whereas yes. a lot of the glass that you see has the, uh, the fins on the outside or the indentation to create that, uh, that effect, that, that uh, optical effect. And again, you know, with the, with the larger series, I can put uh, more of a bouquet on top of the stoppers, you know. Okay. And uh, with the stoppers, it's, it's a little hard to see, but uh, if you looked at it with a little magnifying glass, you can actually see the little stamens on mm -hmm. the little flowers. Over here you have uh, your bird series, which is, these are incredible pieces. Yeah. And you just mentioned the Audubon Society it seems to have an interest in these as well. Yeah, and in the songbirds, which are the, uh, but I'll, uh, I'll be making a lot more of them, uh, like the cardinal, the... Uh, the goldfinch, the male goldfinch, the uh, bluebird, uh, the Baltimore Oriole, uh, the kingfisher. He's not actually a songbird. And um, the blue jay, but I like the blue jay. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of bird lovers don't care for the blue, blue jay because he uh, is an aggressive bird and uh, he eats the uh, eggs the of eggs other birds. Bet, yeah. And the chickadee, but uh, we, we, we're doing a little, we're going to upgrade the chickadee. We're going to put him on a more of a um, bottle within, keeping within this theme here. And the, then the uh, snowy owl and the little horned owl series. So, um, yeah, we have a lot to look forward to. They're great. Well, thanks very much, Chris. Oh, thank Good you. Good to get introduced <laughs> to you. <laughs>